This is a video about relative extrema and Rolle's theorem. So let's get some vocabulary down. Let f be a function whose domain is the i, some interval of the real numbers. Um, so the first thing, we'll say that f has a relative maximum at some point c and i um, if there exists some positive number delta such that um, f of c should be bigger than or equal to f of x for every x that lives in some small interval centered at c that's in the domain of your function, that's what it's trying to say. So in a picture, just here's maybe the graph of f, say, what I'm trying to say is if you've got a hill, then that's a relative maximum. But to say that a little bit more mathematically precise, if you look at that point c there, why is it a relative maximum? Well, because you could put some little window around c, which is this little interval uh, from between those two purple points, such that if you were to plug in any one of these uh, points in this little interval into your function, it's gonna spit out a y value that's below f of c. And so that says that f of c is the biggest y value you get whenever you restrict your x values to be within some small interval around c. All right, part two. So we'll say that f has a relative minimum, so I guess that should probably be underlined, shouldn't it? At some point c and i, if, same idea, there exists delta now, but then you notice um, f of c is smaller than or equal to f of x for every single x, again, in some sufficiently small window around c that's in the domain of your function as well. And so in a picture, it's probably what you think it would be. It would just be if you've got like a hill, or I guess that's a valley, isn't it? Because I already talked about hills. So you've got a valley for the graph of your function f. But you should be able to find, again, some interval around c so that any x you put in that, you picked out of that interval, when you plug it into your function, you're gonna get a y value that, that should be coming kind of above, right? It's supposed to dip back above. So my graph doesn't look like that at all because I didn't really draw it very well. But c is supposed to have the lowest output on that graph. But I think you get the picture. Okay. And then finally three, what's kind of a catch-all for either one of these? Kind of like monotone is a catch-all for increasing or decreasing. We'll say relative extremum if either one or two happen. So again, this is kind of a, a catch-all for either one of these two concepts. So what's the first result that we want to prove? And why are we talking about this now? We've been talking about the derivative. So let's see be an interior point of an interval i at which a function f has relative extremum. So if the derivative f prime of c exists, then f prime of c has to be equal to zero. So in other words, if you've got a function that has a relative maximum or a minimum at some point c, and if I know that the derivative exists there, then the derivative has to be zero. And so what's that trying to say? If I look at my pictures here, that's trying to say, again, that the slope of the tangent lines of the graph here is zero, or if I look down below, the slope of the tangent lines of this graph is zero. Remember, that's what the derivative, you could think about it as calculating the slope of the tangent line to your graph at that point. All right, so how do you prove this result that's down here now? And so what we're going to do is prove the case just where f has a relative maximum. Again, they use this catch-all word extremum here, so I'll just do it in the case that what if we have a max? The proof for a min is pretty similar. So by way of contradiction, let's suppose that f prime of c is bigger than zero. Well, what do I know then, or what could I do? Well, then I should be able to put some window uh, around C so that not only is f prime of C bigger than zero, but uh, all points sufficiently close to f prime of C. Um, I guess all, all outputs of, how should I say this? All right, I got an idea. Remember, f prime of C is the limit as x goes to C of this quantity here, right? So if f prime of c is supposed to be bigger than zero, eventually you should be able to put some window around c so that all of these quantities is bigger than zero. Since again, um, yeah. So, and then also of course, x is not equal to c in this case. And so what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna look at this here. And what do I notice? Well, look at that numerator there. That's the same thing as this kind of difference quotient idea just multiplied by this. So we're focusing on these two right now. And what else do I want to notice? If x is bigger than c, then when I multiplied by x minus c here, that shouldn't change this inequality around. So this quantity should still be bigger than zero. So in other words, if this is supposedly supposed to be larger than zero for all x sufficiently close to c is what this says, well, when I multiply it by some other positive number, then this whole quantity should still be bigger than zero. Okay, 
So then what does that say then? Well, that just justified that f of x minus f of c is bigger than zero. Therefore, f of x is bigger than f of c. Wait a minute though. f was supposed to have a relative max at c. So that's a contradiction. So what we just did is we got a contradiction if f prime of c was bigger than zero. Now what we'll do is we'll show we get a contradiction whenever we flip this around as well. So if f prime is less than zero, then similarly, I should be able to find some neighborhood around c so that kind of this difference quotient idea is less than zero for all x uh, in that neighborhood. And now for x in that neighborhood um, with x less than c, we see that again, similarly here, the numerator here is the same thing as kind of the whole fraction times x minus c, but then uh, what else do I know here? So if x is less than c, then the quantity x minus c is negative. So if I multiplied this by a negative number, that should turn this around. So that should be bigger than zero now. And why is that good? That just justified that f of x minus f of c is larger than zero. Therefore, again, f of x is larger than f of c. So we again contradict the fact that f of c was supposed to be a relative maximum um, for all points inside of that window. Therefore, this can happen. So what's left then, the only possibility is that f prime of c is equal to zero. Okay, so it's also possible that f prime is maybe just not defined at a relative extremum. Um, so to give you an example there, think about absolute value. Um, I know it's got a relative minimum at zero, but I know the derivative doesn't exist there. So those are sort of the, the two possibilities, I guess. If you've got a relative extremum, either the derivative there is zero or the derivative there doesn't exist. All right, let's finish this video with Rolle's theorem. So suppose f is a continuous function on some closed interval i from a to b. And let's also suppose that f prime exists on a, b. And so what does that mean? Like f prime of x is defined, it's a real number for every single x in this interval is what this is trying to say. Uh, but then last thing we'll suppose is, let's suppose that f of a and f of b, right? The value of f at the endpoints of its, of its domain here, it's zero. So what has to happen then? There has to at least exist one point such that so call it c between a and b, such that the derivative there is equal to zero. Maybe to give you a picture here, um, what I've did is I've plotted a and b, and I know that the output at a and b have to be zero. And so if I've got this continuous function here, and I also know that the derivative exists, so I can't have any like jagged or sharp edges, how on earth are you gonna connect the dots from a to b? Well, you either have to do maybe something like this, in which case, boom, you get a point where the derivative is zero, or maybe you do something like this, say. Or maybe you turn a whole bunch of times. I don't know, who cares? But the point is, you turn at least one time. So when that turn happens, that is a point where f prime of c is equal to zero. So how would we prove this? That's kind of the geometric idea behind Rolle's theorem anyway, in my opinion. So what's the proof look like? Well, what if f prime of x is just equal to zero for every x in this interval here? Like I assumed f prime is defined on this interval. What if it's just zero? Well, then we're done. So let's do the harder case. Let's assume that f prime is not equal to zero somewhere in that interval. So maybe a fancy way to say that f prime does not vanish identically on this interval. So by replacing f by a negative f, if necessary, we can assume f has like a positive value. So to give you a picture, what if the f that we're thinking about has this graph down here, it's below the x-axis? Well then think about what does minus f look like? Uh, oh, it's up here. So again, if necessary, just so how this proof's gonna work, I can assume that my function that I'm gonna play with has positive values. And uh, what else do we know? Well, I got to assume that f's continuous here. And what do I know about continuous functions uh, on, a, on a closed interval i? I know that it can, attains its maximum and minimum values. So I know that there exists some number c in my interval such that f of c um, is equal to the supremum of all the outputs of my function on the interval. And I know that this is also positive since I assumed I was able to find some positive value of my function. So what else do I know? Well, by hypothesis, again, I assume that f of a and f of b are both equal to zero. So what do I know then? Well, this c, where f is supposed to attain its maximum value, that's gotta be an interior point to a and b. It's gotta be between them. And so in particular, what have you got then? Well, 
C is an interior point, therefore um, F has a relative maximum at C is what this says up here. So if we put that all together with uh, the result that we um, proved upstairs here, what happens when you have a relative maximum at an interior point where the derivative exists? Boom, F prime of C has to be zero. And so that is the end of Rolle's theorem.